Hello folks and welcome to this week's episode of Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. Today we're going to be down on the Santee Cooper Lakes in South Carolina and on the boat with us today we're going to have Alan Greer from the Triad Bait Company in Lexington, South Carolina. So stick around and don't go away. We'll be right back. This week's Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV is brought to you in part by Camelback Hydration Systems. Do you have a camel on your back? And by Bolay Sportswear and Sunglasses. Also by Buckbuster Scents. Scents for the serious hunter. And by Carolina Outdoor Hunting and Fishing Supply. Hunting and fishing products at an affordable price. And also by the fine folks at the Triad Bait Company in Lexington, North Carolina. Buckbuster Sense has been the chosen deer tracking and cover sense for both guides and professional hunters for years. Try our pine cover scent, acorn cover scent, wild apple, and new this year, sweet corn. And if you need a doe or bucket tracking made from our 100% natural formula, then try our doe estrus or buck urine. Stone Mountain Passion to get that leery buck curious or Stone Mountain Buckbuster to make that mock scrape. So, if you're looking for a good hunting scent at an affordable price, check us out on eBay at Carolina Outdoor Store or on our websites at The Great Outdoors and Beyond or CarolinaOutdoorStore.com. Buckbuster Scents, scents for the serious hunter. Hello folks, are you as passionate about the outdoors like I am? Then tune in each week to Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV or Carolina Outdoor Magazine Radio and catch all the action we have to share with you each week in the great outdoors. Whether you enjoy hiking or camping, or maybe you're a hunting or fishing junkie like I am, you'll be sure to find something you'll enjoy on our show. You can tune in to all the action on our website at carolinaoutdoormagazine.com, Wild TV, or America One Television, as well as being able to download our shows on YouTube at The Outdoor Sportsman. And be sure to listen in to our weekly radio show on Saturday mornings on many North and South Carolina AM and FM stations, or get our podcast on our website or on our Facebook page at Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. Probably need a net. I'm going to bring him up on this side. I need to move my rod net in. You're fine. I'm just going to. 
fine. I'll try to bring him up right behind us. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Come on, baby. Now that was on the, that's on the dip bait. How long was that out there? Not even a minute. Minute? Not even a minute. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Somewhere I've got some. There they are. You got some. There we go. You got him? I got him. My gosh, she is. Look at that. The hook's in the net. We just barely, if I had let any slack up, he'd come off just as he got in the in the net, didn't he? Try not to hurt you there, fish. You see, that ain't gonna happen. He's got that darn thing tied around him, doesn't he? All right. First fish of the day. Can't complain about that. No. <laughs> I'd get it, I'd get it. There you go. Now all you gotta do is keep them out of the trees. Keep them out of the line, too. You need a net. Well, if you have to, what we do is just pick up the rod. You got yeah. the baby, well at least you got the baby out of the way, huh? Yeah, I'm big, got some more. I'm big, I know why. Oh! Don't you start spinning around and get them lines messed up anymore, you catfish. <laughs> Can you see it? They don't like to open their mouth, do they? No. Here's the hook. You got the hook. What's you doing with the line? In it, 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 well, it, it, that one's free. There we go. That wasn't bad. Well, guide hunts and, and uh. I'll let you wind that near. Big Jim got one. All right. Right. Thanks a lot for sharing your fish. All right, you can go this one you feels, this is a catfish. It ain't one of them old nasty, right. nasty stripers. <laughs> <laughs> that was on. This is on the, the dip bait. Pink bait. We caught, we caught the striper on the herring, but we're catching all of our catfish on the dip bait. This dip bait, folks, isn't a, isn't a bait to come out and catch big ones. If you want to catch quantity, then this is what you need to use. No. This is what you need to use if you want to catch quantity. If you want to catch quality, I'd go, I'd go with uh, live bait, cut bait, anything but a but a dip bait. It's just not known to be a lar uh, a big fish bait. But I'm not saying you can't catch them on it. You just won't catch as many as you would on the on the cut bait or the live bait. The beer. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. We got, got another one, one, Randall. Got another one. That's just four. Wish, wishing you were here, Randall. Wishing four, you were four here. Four catfish and a striper, and we ain't been fishing 30 minutes. Really? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> huh? What are y'all fishing for? Catfish. <coughs> whatever bites. Well, yeah. Jim says whatever bites. Right now. I caught, we we got some stink bait on these catfish poles and catching catfish. I caught that striper a while ago on cut bait on herring. Okay, all right. Them are just right. They land on the bottom. Just right to bring home. Okay. And uh, we're talking to Alan. He's talking to Randall. Yeah, he's getting. Uh, Debbie's filming. We're. Uh, Randall couldn't right, make it down. Let me get let me get back fish. We got another so, one on. I can see. Alan you know. jumped on the boat with us, so um, we're reeling some in. We're catching some fish. We're having a good time, and um, maybe Randall can make it down next time. But them are really good oh, eating size. More. Really good eating size right there. But uh, let me get him back in. Bigfoot baits are a high quality plastic bait chosen by both professional and amateur anglers when they need a bait that will stand up to all kinds of conditions and abuse. Bigfoot baits come in a variety of different shapes and sizes and they are available for the fresh and saltwater anglers. Bigfoot soft plastic baits should be your chosen bait to
squash your competition. This segment of Carolina Outdoor Magazine is brought to you in part by Bigfoot Bait. Squash your competition. Buckbuster Sense. Sense for the serious hunter. And also by Quail Hollow Bird Farm. Game birds and bird dog training. Nice one. <laughs> Get out of that tree. This is a nice one. Come on, come up here, Debbie, so the sun don't kill me. I'm gonna take him on this side of the boat. This is a little bit bigger than the last few we caught. If you're just tuning in today to today's show, everybody, we're fishing down here on Santee Cooper Lake trying to catch some Thanksgiving Day catfish. I got Alan Greer from the Triad Bait Company with me on the boat. And so far, we've been doing pretty good. This is probably what, number five, number five, six? Five. And a striper, and we've only been out here on the lake. I don't know, maybe we've been out here 45 minutes, so we're having a good time catching them. We can't get the boat set up right, so the sun's probably beating us up a little bit, but there you go. Catching them around the end too. Easy to, easy, just right. Easy to unhook just them. Right. Yeah. No way he ain't swallowed them, just right. Yeah. All right. That's a good eater there. Let's get another one. We just, uh, they, all the flood water we've had, the water's really high in the current. If you can see, camera catches it, you can see the current moving. I had trouble anchoring the boat. But um, whenever in this diversionary canal, whenever they're pulling water like this, this is the place to be. Um, I love fishing this kind of water where the current, especially with dip bait and live, live bait or cut bait, I love fishing this kind of water. But I also love drifting. They just happen to be biting here right now, so why go out in the lake and, and drift if you can catch them here? So maybe here after lunch they'll change and we'll have to go out there and drift fish. But. Uh, if you're going to come down here in the diversion area canal, just remember that. If they're pulling water, especially like they are right now, that's the best time to come up here and set up. You don't have to drift it up and back and forth. You can't. A lot of guys do that. You do it the best way that works for you. I just like anchoring the boat and sitting and fishing the shoreline because all on this shoreline, there's all kinds of structure, all kinds of uh, riprap in the, on the bottom and logs and trees and rocks. So, and that's what catfish like. So just remember that. Hey, camera lady, you got a dot on your lens. Good hit, that one. Hey, you real man, will ya? Well, you oh, done. He's off, he's off. He, 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 he on the man, that was a big one, too. A big one got away, oh, always oh, man, does. That was a big one, yeah. Let me give you some wine here. That's what you call a tube, okay? And that, that's what holds Now, they have been sponges. I don't like the sponges. That's the original thing that they use, okay? I don't like the sponges. You got a bunch of them from gas lines off boat motors. <coughs> you can't. <laughs> but what I like to do, what, one thing you got to do with this is you got to get this thing dry before you put that stuff on it. Really? If it ain't dry, it won't stick. Huh. And then after you dry it off and you put it on, then you wet it. And that activates the plasma and makes it stick. So just dry it off good. And you just push and that, it that's what you made. That right there, this right? right here is, yeah. This is something that we make. And you just put that down in there. Pack it, pack the tube. Pack that right up full. Don't be afraid of wasting it because that's how it catches fish. And then you wet it, and that activates the plasma. So when you cast, it stays on. It, most of it will stay on. Let it run out and hold on. Till the next bite. And the original people that made that was Junie's Cat Tracker. Now you got Sonny's makes it and Charlie, old Charlie's makes it. But, uh, and, and well, we're uh, making well, it. That probably worked good for carp too also, right? I don't know. I've never used it for anything but catfish. It, bet, it may work good for carp. I really, I don't know. Good question. Well, he's not, no, he's not. He might be a netter fish. I don't know. We had to move. This kind of technique we're fishing, everybody. You don't want to stay very long in one spot. 15 to 30 minutes, and if you're not getting any bites, pick up and move. 
you'll pull into an area like this and you'll catch whatever fish is in this area and then after that just go ahead and move someplace you know move down all we did all we've done is we moved down about 40 to 50 feet and just came down to this next snag and all we're doing is coming down this diversionary canal and fishing snag after snag after snag all the way down and that's how we're getting our fish another good frying pan size big front can't take a big frying pan though won't it <laughs> remember now if you can't get Pull that on, it hooks out it's just got it here we go okay yep got that in there nice one what i'm doing it folks if you see this snag right here and we pulled the boat down in front and this thing's probably about 30 feet behind the boat right here this rod's not out very far but them last two fish i caught was right here and i'm just putting the uh, the dip bait on there and we're just i'm just lopping it off so it just drops about a foot in front of that tree and i guess there's probably two or three catfish underneath there and in this brush and that smell from that dip bait pulls them out. We haven't had a bite since we caught that striper, I don't think, Alan, on the herring, have we? Nope. It's all been on the dip bait. But it's like I always tell you, folks, I don't care if you're crappy fishing, I don't care if you're brim fishing, cat fishing, take an alternative bait because I've gone out crappy fishing and them not hit minnows, but they would kill the jigs. You know, they would just jump all over a jig. And it's the same thing with catfish. You can come down here and they might bite the herring. They might take the herring. But if they don't and that's all you have, if that's, if that's the only bait we have, we'd be talking about going in for lunch right now because, you know, we wouldn't be catching any more fish. Um, but because we've had the dip bait on, we've been able to catch probably up now upwards of 12 catfish. That's good another one. Dig him. Still over? Yeah. Oh, I thought you had another one on that pole. No. Is huh. he tangled on that line? That must be. Yeah. He's not very big. Yeah, you, you got this line too. Just, just a lot of, a lot of small ones here. What we're gonna do, everybody, because we are catching some small ones, and hey, we're having fun, we're having a good time, but we're gonna pick up here in a little bit, and we're gonna move out there. If you look way behind me down there, you'll see them two markers, and that water out there comes up over a rock ledge and then it drops down in the back to about 30 feet <clears throat> my little secret I'm letting you have so when you come down here you'll know where to go but um, that drops off to about 30 feet there and that's a good spot so we're probably going to do that here in just a little bit because uh, we're catching a lot of small ones and these are all right throwing back we'll get a little bit bigger yeah, one bring it back one. so we're just gonna we're gonna try a few more in here and get a few more fish along with the small ones comes a big one every now and then but uh, you know you'll you'll see us here eventually way down there in the back and you can see that water where the currents coming out of here so hard it's breaking over them rocks stirring up that water so that's gonna be a good spot to go and catch some catfish yeah. fish on fish on oh that's what we're talking about is that right what we, here is that what we after well, he's just a dragging in. He's not even fighting yet. No, he don't even know he's hooked. Well, folks, as you can see, we've moved out. Like I said, we're going to out here in the in the lake. And we threw this rod out with the dip bait. It's probably out, been out here five minutes. And we're in a hole. We're in about a 18-foot hole right here. And right over here, it's about five, five feet deep. And we're fishing in this hole. And we got us a small channel cat to start. These fish are so strong right now because of this, this current, because of all the rain and the floodwaters we've had. These fish have had to fight this current for weeks now, so they're building up their strength a little bit. That one here. But um, there's a rock ledge all the way through here, and the diversionary comes down. And the water's coming over this rock ledge, dropping and depositing food into this hole. Now, I come across here with the depth finder, and I'm the one to not just fish anywhere. I'm fishing fish. Where we are set up right here, there's fish back here in this hole. We marked them on the depth finder. So, 
Um, but what happens is, is any food up there is being deposited right in this hole right here. So these catfish are sitting in here and it's an easy meal for them. They just wait for it to come over and drop down in the hole. I want to do a thing on this rig I'm using, Debbie. All right. What we got is I'm using 25 pound test big game. And because of all the current that we have here, I'm coming down to a two ounce egg sinker. And I've got a swivel on there. Okay, and that reason I put a swivel on there is because if you're using herring or this tubey, that line is turning like this constantly. So you don't want, this will keep your line from getting tangled up. And then what I'm doing right there, just using a clinch knot, just tying my hook on. And then I use that, that tubey to hold my bait. Now this dip bait that we're using is a system. Um, and what I mean by it's a system is you have the dip bait and then you have this tubey. And, and with this tubey what that does and, is it holds that dip bait on there. And once I get that hook on, you can see how that tubey is. I just pull that hook right through there like that and that hook is sticking out. And then you dry this off and get your dip bait out. Hopefully I won't lose all of our killer bait over the edge of the boat, Alan. Yeah, that'd be bad. And uh, don't be afraid to use a good bit. <laughs> now that really looks kind of spooky. I can imagine what it looks like, but uh, you ought to be in here or the boat with us. But um, that's what's catching all the fish, so just keep that in mind. If, once again, we've got three rods out here with herring. So far, we haven't had a bite. So just keep that in mind. I mean, I know a lot of guys that strictly live bait and strictly cut bait guys, but that would be a day you'd be out here not catching your fish. You right, agree? Right. <laughs> you wouldn't uh, catch none today, yet, about that. No, you we wouldn't have caught many today no. on herring. All right, back out in the hole. There it is. There it is. You got that little fish? Yep. I know, I know it ain't no big. Yeah, he. No, he's not. <laughs> Bite's better than nothing. Oh yeah. At least, at least we're gonna find out what that little bite was, ain't it? Yeah. He won't bother the rest of them. He quit. He gave up fighting. <laughs> That's the last one. That gives us plenty of fish. Well, folks, that's going to end it for today's show. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and I'd also like to thank Alan Greer from the Triad Bait Company in Lexington, North Carolina, for joining us on the boat here this week. Like always, folks, thanks for tuning in, and I'm Jim from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. We'll catch you somewhere next week in the great outdoors when we do it all again. Thanks for watching. <laughs>